Well, greetings and welcome. Welcome to online worship here at York United Methodist Church in Medina, Ohio. This is the third Sunday of Advent and we focus on the aspect of joy. Joy, the joy of the Lord. May the joy of the Lord be your strength. to stay connected in whatever ways you can, whether that's uh, through virtual means, through um, social media, Zoom platforms, uh, calling folks on the telephone, writing a Christmas card and sending it off. Um, staying connected with one another as well as staying connected with God is imperative during this time. And it's a joy when I'm able to talk with folks over the phone. It's a joy when I'm able to um, just connect in, in so many different ways. Um, it is, it is uh, so needed, so helpful, and part of our healing process. And so um, it was great last week when Ruth Beeshire uh, sent a message to the church through a voicemail uh, sent my way to be passed on to you. And today, uh, Ruth Britnall would like to greet her church family as well. Here's Ruth. Hi, Pastor Dave. And to all my friends at York United Methodist Church, I hope to find you all waiting for the Christmas time to come. Pastor Dave had a wonderful sermon today, which gave us all hope for the ending of this virus. May you all have a blessed Christmas with your family and friends, because I sure miss all of you. Well, just a few announcements as we get started this day. I just want to thank everybody from the education um, team for being innovative and adaptive and creative during this time that we've been set apart. I just want to thank each and every person who's been a part of that education commission, that education team, um, in putting together some, some items that have really helped with our families discipleship and especially for the younger children. Uh, I just want to thank Debbie and for all those who helped put together um, this night at the North Pole package that people were able to pick up too that we would not miss such a great event here at York United Methodist Church when we celebrate that night at the North Pole. And so thank you for putting together another wonderful package. One of the themes that we may be talking about tonight is uh, tell us about what your favorite Christmas uh, carol is. Um, and so it is a joy. The information for the link to the Zoom gathering for coffee, cocoa, and conversations is sent out by the office to everyone um, in the church on Friday in the update that comes from our office administrator, uh, Kelly. And so look for that email that includes the link to join the, uh, the church gathering on Sunday night, tonight at 6.30. I hope to see more of you there. Um, it, would be a, it would be a joy to just check in. And I, I know a lot of us may be Zoomed out or very tired. I think maybe even some grief comes um, into it that uh, we do some things that, uh, that remind us that we're not able to do other things. But if we could see your faces and, uh, and have your presence on the Zoom meetings. It would mean so much to us. I uh, hope to see you there tonight um, at 6.30. You can pop in and, and leave at any time. It, it, there's no agenda, just a gathering time that is a blessing for everyone involved. Hope to see you there tonight. One other announcement is that uh, we are still able to purchase and receive Christmas poinsettias. I have the um, order form here that is emailed out through the office to each and every one of you. And you're still able to purchase some of the plants and to write in 
um, the names of people you'd like to honor or um, give in memory of. Uh, we will have a time of pickup uh, for these poinsettias. Uh, we order them in the summertime, actually, and so we've already got them coming. I hope that you'll be able to receive yours and have a little something from the church at Christmas that will bless your heart. And so the order deadline um, here is actually tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow. So if you haven't ordered your poinsettia, um, you could even call the office tomorrow and talk with Kelly and we'll fill a form out for you. And uh, we know that uh, uh, you'll get your, your payment in uh, in any way that you, you can. Um, the plants are $8.50 uh, a piece, just like uh, it, it usually is. And, um, and you can feel free to, um, to donate your plants to someone if you'd like. Um, but don't miss out. Poinsettia deadline tomorrow. Give the church a call or email. We'll hear this call to worship. Come and worship. O oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord, for he alone is worthy. For he alone is worthy. And so come, come let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Please hear the word of the Lord as recorded in the book of Isaiah, chapter 35, verse 10. And the ransomed of the Lord will return. They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them, and sorrow and singing will flee away. We relight the first candle as a symbol of Christ, our hope. May the light sent from God shine in our darkness to show us the true gift of his salvation. We also relight the second candle as a symbol of Christ, our peace. May the word of the Lord sent from God through the prophets lead us into the hope of God's salvation. the third candle as a symbol of Christ our joy. For the Lord rejoices over us with gladness and fills us with his joy. Come Lord Jesus, amen. tell you a little story about this man who was very lonely and cold and dark of winter. It was so cold, it was the iciest winter ever and there was ice all over the trees and all over the ground. You couldn't climb the tree or you'd slide right down. And the ground was so frozen, the dogs had no place to bury their bones. And every day the man would bundle up and um, he wouldn't be able to go outside, it was too cold, because you would freeze your ears and your nose and your toes. So he stayed inside, and he went to bed right after dinner, because it got dark so early. He bundled up in lots and lots of blankets, and every morning he would look outside to see his apple tree, his favorite apple tree. Oh, how he longed to sit under that apple tree on his favorite bench. Oh, he longed for spring when he could plant and grow flowers and vegetables in his garden by his tree and sit in that bench. But every day he got up and it was still icy and icy and he was getting sadder and sadder. Then one morning he woke up and he heard drip, 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 drip. He wondered what that was. 
what it was was ice dripping off the roof and it was also dripping off that tree of his and but it was still winter he had put the hands on his uh, glass to on the window as he was looking out and it was still cold was it still winter he wondered but he, it must be it was still still so cold so for days and days still he just stayed inside looking out his window hoping for spring till one day he took off all those heavy covers and looked out the window and before he even got a chance to check the glass and see if it was cold he saw his tree had little tiny leaves on it it was spring it was so it was spring and he could go outside and enjoy the warm weather again he was so happy well Jesus told a story like this and to tell us that even when it's dark and scary and boring um, there is if you're patient and if you wait there will be light to come and that light is Jesus and he will always be with us so always remember that joy to the world the Lord is come let us is Christmas. We could trace all of the traditions, making a careful examination of where they come from. But in the end, the average kid will tell you that what is special about Christmas is gift giving, presents. So we have highly commercialized this event by giving and receiving presents. We like receiving what is on our wish list. But is this all that Christmas is about? Our children could be led to believe this. We should be sure that they know about the very best gift that has ever been given. Keep Christ in Christmas. Let His presence dwell in you. Would you now hear this prayer of illumination? God of signs and wonders, we come to your word again and again, seeking understanding and the new life that it offers. Oh, by the power of your Holy Spirit, illuminate our hearts and our minds so that we may believe the testimony, 
that we may have eternal life in the name of Jesus Christ, our teacher and our Savior. This morning's Old Testament reading is from Zephaniah, chapter 3, verses 14 through 20. Sing, O daughter of Zion, shout aloud, O Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away your punishment. He has turned back your enemy. The Lord, the King of Israel, is with you. Never again will you fear any harm. On that day, they will say to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands hang limp. The Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. The sorrows for the appointed feasts I will remove from you. They are a burden and a reproach to you. At that time, I will deal with all who oppressed you. I will rescue the lame and gather those who have been scattered. I will give them praise and honor in every land where they were put to shame. At that time, I will gather you. At that time, I will bring you home. I will give you honor and praise among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your very eyes, says the Lord. But in those days following that distress, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, the stars will fall from the sky, and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, men will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory, and he will send his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heavens. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that it is near, right at the door. I tell you the truth, this generation will surely not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. No one knows about that day or hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Well, today's message is being brought to you by the letters R, P, C, and D. And now I know my ABCs. Tell me what you think of me. When my daughter Julia was little, I would sing her to sleep. Our bedtime routine was one where we would lay together in bed and I would start by reading a few books to her like Goodnight Moon. And then we would pretend that we could see these imaginary clouds on her room's ceiling that took the shape of some of the things that we had experienced during the day. She'd say something like, Dad, that cloud looks like you and you are singing songs today. And I'd say, and that cloud up there, that looks like mom giving you a big hug. It was really amazing to delve into the world of her childlike imagination and cloud watching at the end of the day. Well, that was the best. That was the best. And we would then, of course, say our prayers. And then we would end the nighttime routine with me singing some songs to her. Her favorite songs included the alphabet song, right, to learn her letters, and 99 bottles of milk on the wall. Uh, that always had me imitating numerous sucking and gulping noises to her utter enjoyment, right? And there were other favorites too. 
One song was called Back to Back Chicken Shack. And that little ditty involved her climbing up on my back during the song until I finally shook her off. And we were literally back to back as we sang the song over and over and over again. And you know, that ritual usually ended abruptly when mom would call out to us from the other room and tell us that it was time to settle down because it was bedtime. And, and then one time Julia saw an imaginary cloud that looked like us giggling after mom told us to simmer down. I remember that. Uh, and then finally, a very special song was usually saved for the last song of the night. And it was a song that I made up using the words of one of our favorite books called I'll Love You Forever. I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always. As long as forever, my baby, you'll be. And then I would usually add the extra refrain by singing, I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, O oh, my soul. Rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you hear, and may it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. And before I could even finish the song, Julia would usually fall fast asleep safe and secure in her dad's arms. And I would often just stay right there for a little while, relishing the moment. And as I continued to quietly sing over her, I would rejoice in our relationship. And then I would spend some extra time myself in prayer. And more times than not, I also fell asleep right there in God's special embrace. You know, those moments always reminded me of our Old Testament passage today that tells us that God sings over us and rejoices over us as he relishes in our own loving relationship. And so when I read that passage in Zephaniah again this week, before I began digging into it again with study for my sermon prep, I, I first let my memories of God's goodness just flood my soul as I simply read the verses aloud. And as I read it, words began to pop out in a pattern of a song-like cadence. And all the words began with the letters R-E. Rejoice, renew, remove reproach, renown, restore. And, and they were all words speaking about relationships and redemption, repeating the resounding joy of God. You know, I even tried to sing them to that old storybook melody that we made up. All right, uh, rejoice, renew, remove, reproach, renown, restore, redeem me, God. Right, but the more I sang it, the more the melody began morphing into the tune of Come Thou Long Away to Jesus, and it brought me back to my Advent study, right? Um, Rejoice, renew, remove, reproach, renown, restore. <laughs> so it was kind of fun. And so I then read the passage again, jotting down some more notes in terms of what I was hearing from God really at that moment before I even started studying commentaries and Bible references that um, helped me so much in preparation for my sermons. And words that made it onto the page this time were now words beginning with the letter P, words like presence and purpose, protection and promise, words promoting peace. But you know, there are also some foreboding words of prophecy and preference and power and politics. And, and you know, if you looked close enough, you might even read in between some of the lines, the pain of our pandemic Wow, how profound, right? How profound. Even that line that serves as a prelude from Father God to Daughter Zion. 
my daughter Jerusalem. Even that intro brought me back to the pronounced songs of joy. Oh, my friends, as we wait in Advent, a song is coming with joy, with joy. It's a gospel song. It's a redemption song. It's a song of deliverance. It's an amazing grace song that is sung by God, who is singing over his children a song of powerful praise, a song of both remembrance and anticipation. It's a song for the clouds of glory, shaped in the forms of past, present, and future. It's a song for a festival celebration, an Advent song, a Christmas carol, even a bedtime lullaby. I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always. As long as forever, my child, you'll be. Right? Isn't it reassuring to know that God sings over us a song of promise, a song of, of hope and peace and joy and love? I don't know. Maybe we should take a cue from a choir director in the Psalms and insert a musical pause right here, right? Uh, a Selah pause and, and let that sink in for a minute. I mean, let it sink in. God sings over us. He sings over you rejoicing in his promise. Selah. Rejoice our promise P. Now I know my ABCs. Tell me what you think of me. Now when it comes to the sponsorship letters of C and D, uh, we put this song of joy in context. Context, 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 right? The letter C is represented by only one word here, an important word, the word context, right? We have to know the context of the passage to truly understand the promised joy of God's song. And in the midst of the context, we see words that start with the letter D, destruction, despair, dysfunction, discomfort, disobedience, and darkness. Oh, today's poetic prophecy needs to be heard and understood within its context in order to capture the abrupt shift to the unexpected command to sing aloud in joyful exultation. Right? One commentator says, God's promised salvation interrupts a divine judgment with a promised song of joy. I love that. The, the day of darkness, she says, and gloom is supplanted by a day of gladness. Oh, my friends, my friends, a song is coming and it will be a song of joy, a song of joy. But let's not get too far ahead of ourselves, right? Zephaniah's prophetic song calls people to lament and repent, See, it even rhymes, right? Lament and repent, for the book of Zephaniah consists predominantly of what are called judgment oracles, which are, which are a series of judgment statements that invoke the day of the Lord, which is a special day when people will be judged and found guilty of breaking their covenant with God. And like the weeping prophet Jeremiah, Zephaniah laments, over the blatant idolatry and the corruption and the injustice of the day, right up to that last chapter towards the end, um, that, that, um, that part that's found in Zephaniah 3.8, right up to that prophet's advent call to wait for the Lord. Right, Zephaniah 3.8. The author spells out the basic ABCs of the spiritual and political oppression perpetrated by leaders in Judah. And he also warns of God's impending punishment and destruction. And as a result of the social injustice, the oppressed are fearful and ashamed, while the powerful are arrogant and corrupt and prideful, all the while rejecting any kind of divine correction. And so the song of deliverance that brings joy to the oppressed people, the people who are downtrodden, right? The, the, that, that song promises that God will save the lame and he will gather the outcasts. He will change their shame into world-renowned praise. Isn't that amazing? 
And we hear that truth sung in chapter 3, verse 19, which actually foreshadows Mary's song, right? The Magnificat, uh, Mary's song that we will rehearse next Sunday. But there, there is to be this great reversal, this great reversal and the crucial connection and the juxtaposition between the judgment's destruction and the promised salvation. That's at the very crux of the gospel message, right? God's grace is amazing. It is. Our Old Testament passage today is the climaxing chorus of God's amazing grace, right? Within the very context of the chaotic crisis comes the promised song of joy. There is a vivid contrast within the context that is at the very heart of the gospel message, right? There is a contrast between the just and the unjust, the unjust, right? Injustice, um, the peace and the violence, the security and the fear, the salvation and the shame. There is a critical contrast pointing to the promised future, a contrast between the now and the not yet, right? We live in those in-between times, and there's a contrast pointing to the promised future between the now and the not yet. This is a song of hope, it's a song of hope for those living in the days between. The prophet looks beyond the pending judgment, the pending punishment, right? And the restored redemption, right? Pending punishment, restored redemption, right? R and P, P and R. Now I know my ABCs. Tell me what you think of me. Into this reality of past present, and future, the prophecy speaks of renewal and restoration, redemption, an end to our guilt and shame. It's from there, in that context, that we too can repeat the sounding joy ourselves within our own context of, of those whom God sings and rejoices over. This is our song of songs as well. And, and when we lie down at night, we can rest assured embraced by God. And we can look up and we can anticipate the Son of Man coming in the clouds. You know, whenever we read about God in the clouds, right, what we're talking about is actually God's presence, God's presence, right? In the book of Exodus, when the cloud of fire and smoke on the mountain is detailed, right, Moses is found to be in God's presence, the cloud by day and the fire by night in the wilderness was God's presence with his people. When Jesus ascended in the clouds and the disciples witnessed God's presence before them, right? And when he comes again in the clouds, the mighty presence of God will be seen by all. God's presence with us is experienced in the incarnation, in Christ's coming. Jesus, who is God, came to dwell with us. And with his coming, we sing joy to the world in harmony with God. Because he is with us. He has come. He is come. And he will come again. Right? The light invades the darkness. The kingdom of God breaks in and the joy of his salvation interrupts the dark night of the soul. Therefore, do not be afraid. Do not fear, for Emmanuel God is here. God is in the midst of us, right? And, and the refrain of God's song of joy that the singer wants to get stuck in our head and, and in our heart too is, do not fear, do not be afraid, right? Those words, do not fear, that's not just a common plea. No, it is a pronounced declaration. And we hear it proclaimed in the Gospels as well, right? That angelic command is part of the good news. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid, Zechariah, father of John the Baptist. Do not be afraid, Mary. The angels say, do not be afraid, for I am bringing you good news of great joy. And then again, at the empty tomb, the angels repeat the sounding joy, right? By saying to the women, do not be afraid. He's not here. He is risen. And even the risen Christ reiterates the phrase, do not be afraid, on many occasions. The song of joy interrupts 
our fear and our shame. It interrupts sin and death. It even interrupts our Advent wreath this morning, right? Today, we light the pink candle that interrupts all the purple ones, right? The, the pink or the rose-colored candle represents the joy that breaks into our daily lives with the presence of the Lord, right? The purple, the purple has a sense of, uh, that is similar to the, the Lenten season of this repentance and this penitence. But the joy breaks in. The joy breaks in. The, the joy interrupts. The third Sunday of Advent is uh, traditionally called Gaudet Sunday from the Latin command to rejoice, to rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice, right? Rejoice for the day of the Lord is near. Mark's gospel passage also points us to a coming day of the Lord, right? And that section in the gospel, in Mark's gospel, in chapter 13, it's sometimes called the little apocalypse. And it reminds us, right, in those apocalyptic terms that there is, there is a cosmic battle, there is a dualism, a cosmic battle between good and evil, and that sometimes, sometimes evil looks like it's getting the upper hand, right? It kind of appears that way. But the apocalyptic language also reminds us that it is only with God's intercession, right, and divine interruption that things can be brought back into a right alignment, right? Kind of back-to-back -back chicken shack, right? Um, it's the ABC building blocks of God's promised song of joy that brings restoration to all things at all times, even in our time today in these in-between days, right? We are in-between days in lots of ways, right? And, and if I ask God to tell me what he thinks of me, then he responds by singing praises over me. And the same is true for all of you, for all of you. And, and so, hey, hey, look, child of God, that, that cloud up there looks like Jesus in the manger, yeah, and, th and that cloud up there looks, looks like God singing over us. A and do you see that one? Do you see that one right up there? Do you see that one? That cloud right up there looks like a congregation returning from the 2020 pandemic with a renewed sense of joy. Do you see it? Can you see that one in the clouds? And, and look at that one. Look at that one. That cloud looks like us giggling when all is calm and all is bright. And so round yon virgin, mother and child, holy infant so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace. Sleep in heavenly peace. Amen. Well, I'd like to thank you once again all of you who are so faithful and generous in your tithes and your offerings. This week, we're able to launch our online giving. And so on our website, you're able to go on and make an offering in a secure way through our website. And you're able to choose whether the, the offering is to be used in the general account, towards our missions, towards our building fund, or any other area in the church where you'll be able to specify. Uh, we keep a good record of, of all of that online giving, and we are just so thankful for uh, Kelly, our office administrator, for doing all the research and the hard work in getting that up and running. Let us pray. Let us pray. Oh God, we bring to you our offerings. We bring to you our tithes and our offerings that would build up your kingdom with thanksgiving that you, O oh God, provide more than enough for all. Let us give as each is able for the benefits of Christ's church and for God's world. 
Amen. Gracious God, with gratitude and thanksgiving for all that you have given to us, we offer to you our offerings, our tithes, our gifts, our service, our witness, our prayers. Oh Lord, we pray that we may help feed a hungry world, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. For the sake of Jesus Christ, use these gifts for your kingdom. May it be so. Amen. Let us now intercede on behalf of others as we remain in an attitude of prayer. O oh God, our helper, we thank you for keeping our lives always in your care and in your protection. We pray for any and all who are in harm's way. For those walking in the midst of danger, we pray. For those who are treading along a slippery path, we pray. For those who are exhausted and are seeking relief, we pray. For those who face a a mountain of debt, we pray. O oh, be our guardian and our guide, we pray, settling all our feet on your paths of righteousness and peace. We pray for those who are struggling. We pray for those who are struggling to answer a new call in their lives. We answer to you, O oh God, in your call in our lives. And we pray for those who are struggling with a major transition within their lives. We pray for those who are struggling with their faith and with their understanding. We pray for those who are struggling with grief, ancient or new. Keep in your tender care and mercy, O God, those who are sick in mind, body, and spirit, those who are weighed down by depression or pain, those who are recuperating from surgery, those who need healing from accidents. Protect not only us and those we love, but also the whole wide world you so love, in places of war, bring peace. In places beset by natural disaster, bring calm and restoration. Where there is unrest and injustice, make justice our aim. Help us not to miss the mark. Where hope has grown tired and thin, lift our sight. So that we may see Hope beyond hope. Life beyond death. And you lifted up before us, O oh God. In the name of Christ, who gave himself for our sake, we pray. Amen. May you receive this benediction, charge, and blessing. Fear not, fear not, people of God, for Christ has brought strength and victory to you, to you. And so as you go this day and in all the days ahead, may you experience the very presence of God in your life. May you hear his song of joy being sung over you now and forevermore. Amen.